All right, so long story short, I was thinking about how usable the user interface for Linux CNC is. Then I thought about a FANUC controller and how usable FANUC controllers are. So I kind of put the two together, kind of in my own head, batted them against each other and thought, okay, what are, what are aspects I like of one and I hate totally in the other? So without further ado, I got some bullet points here and I'm going to talk about things I don't like about each one and things I do like about each one. I'm going to try to be as unbiased as possible. I, I, I am going to go back and forth and kind of kind of play devil's advocate even on myself. So first thing I don't like about FANUC or I like about FANUC that I don't like about Linux CNC is how it handles offsets. In every industrial controller I've ever used, and I've used Mazax, Akuma, Haas, and Fanuc. I don't think I ever used a Fidel, but I ran a Fidel with a with a Fanuc controller on it. All of those machine controllers had one standard uh, or three standard offsets. You had your work, your geometry, and your wear. So you could, as the tool was wearing out, especially on a lathe, which it happens a lot more on a lathe than it does on a mill, you could tweak it, and with cutter comp, you could get a better, uh, 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 hold a higher tolerance for a longer time, even as that tool dolls. On Linux CNC, they don't have that. You just have your offsets for your tools and your work, and that's it. You don't have your wear. Uh, you can, of course, use cutter comp and you can tweak it within cutter comp but if you were going to go change a tool uh, especially on a lathe uh, on a lathe set up with Linux CNC you don't have that ability and it's not as nice um, next thing is accessibility you can download Linux CNC on just about any computer you'd have to boot in through the BIOS and there are videos all over the internet on how to do it how to how to install Linux which is essentially the same through a BIOS of a computer, and it's, I mean, just follow the bouncing ball on someone's YouTube video, and you can do it within within an hour, I think. It depends on the uh, the disk speed or the write speed from a flash drive or uh, a DVD if you go old school. It, it it's, doesn't take anything at all. But if you were to want to get access to a FANUC controller, they do make CNC controllers I, I know at least Haas does I'd be surprised if Fanuc doesn't do the same for a classroom you would either have to take a class um, at a career center or a vocational school sometimes they're called or a college or something like that just to get access to a, a Fanuc or other industrial control that's more more standard um, I'd say you can't really get your hands on that but you can for Reliability. I have had one instance where Linux CNC will it just totally died on me. I had to reinstall the entirety of Linux CNC. I think that was my fault. I was digging around. I was working on a GUI and I was digging around graphical user interface for those of you who don't know. So I was making this GUI and I was modifying existing GUIs and doing all this work all within the computer's files and I think I might have deleted something and when it went to boot it couldn't find the file that it was looking to boot with so it just gave an error and I couldn't boot into the program or boot into the OS at all. I think that was more on me. I, you'd be hard pressed to do that on on a FANUC just because there's such a there's such a rigid machine like you got to have a specialist out to do anything of that of that sort um so yeah reliability sucks if you're going to be digging around in your files and you don't necessarily know what you're doing like I must have not known what I was doing I must have deleted something rather important uh repair okay with Linux CNC you can get one of these boards 30 bucks off Amazon of all places yeah Amazon that great place you can buy you know machine tools from which totally aren't for China you can buy one of these controllers 
uh, this is a digital one. You'd have to have, if you went with the servo route, you'd have to go with uh, servo drivers that are digital and closed loop because there's no way that you can get the I.O. required for multiple encoder channels from all the stepper. 30 bucks. Usually this board is put towards running stepper motors. Um, you can communicate to a gecko drive with these boards and run a servo motor. Uh, I think up to... Don't quote me on this, but I think up to, for the Gecko drive itself, up to oh, 80 volts, I think is the, the maximum voltage. So you can get a pretty decent sized DC motor running off one of these. Now it does run through RS-232 here and has the USB. That USB isn't there for any communication. It just needs enough power to flip this relay here. So it's got a little relay. You'll hear it when you flip the off. Uh, flip on and off the e-stop you'll hear it pop so yeah super cheap so if you were to try to replace a card or anything that went wrong even a like a button that went bad on a fan of controller yeah good luck with that because if you don't need a service technician out to do it the parts still gonna be pretty expensive anyways luckily fanic is a common enough machine that every one every machine builder uh, or machine repair slash machine builder should know it well enough to to know what's inside that so yeah now there are other boards that you can use that run analog and um, do have the IO necessary to run multiple encoders for your server motors so you don't even need closed loop server motors you can get like you can Amazon servo motor drivers and get servo drivers that hopefully work, but uh, that's the fun of eBay, getting something and being depressed afterwards because you spent $200 on it. Be warned, please, for the love of God. User interface. I'm not going to lie. The user interface on Linux CNC sucks. Like, legitimately sucks. Axie is the worst interface, and I've used a lot of machines. I've been in job shops where they've had like five or six machines, and I've run all the machines that they've had in there. Axie sucks. Change your uh, user interface. Now, if you like it, you like the simplicity of it, sure, more power to you. Um, the fact that there isn't even an offset tab and your offsets are, you know, on the top menu underneath, I think Windows or something like that. It's weird. It's a weird setup that you, and then you have to go there and you have to open a new window just to access your tool library. It's not, it's not ideal. I like tabs where you have to tab into manual. That way there's no way that you can, I don't know, manually move the machine in a program, even though I know that's impossible. It's like a mental thing. It's like, ah, those buttons are there. They're grayed out probably, but I don't want to do something stupid and crash this machine. I got to give it to Fanuc in this side, even though I've worked with some, some zingers in Fanuc as far as really bad controls. Uh, I worked in this, this big factory for a short time and I've only worked in three shops so don't don't be thinking that I'm gonna jump around no this is back when I was in school represent um, I wasn't 17 I was 18 this is my brother's shirt so um, precision machines class we both went through it he was a year ahead of me anyways back when I was in school I got a temp job at this factory and they had machines and I don't even know the brand I didn't know the brand uh, but they were Fuji's and they chattered and they leaked um, hydraulic fluid and the engineers hated them the repair guys hated them and the operators hated them because they were so convoluted and it ran off of windows uh windows xp which windows xp is pretty solid and i'm assuming it had some kind of real-time uh operating system or real-time it would have to have something real-time behind it because even with Windows XP you're not getting a real-time system so 
it's not you, you run the risk of weird things happening um so yeah it was it was a kind of a weird machine everybody hated them I had respect for the guys that ran them on a day-to-day -day basis because they were just weird, 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 weird machines. Um, and they were Fanuc. And it was they, these machines were like from 2006. So not like super old machines. They had, they had USB capability, I think. I don't remember entirely. So not super outdated where you need a DNC, but they sucked. That being said... Linux CNC does have saving grace in the fact that you can change it to whatever whatever user interface you want. You can make your own. I prefer something more more akin to a Fanuc, um, and Fanuc is really the, the vanilla the vanilla um, CNC machine of the CNC world, the CNC controller. So I gotta give it to Fanuc on that side. I tend to go towards G Screen in my uh, GUIs for Linux CNC, and G Screen really is more of a Fanuc style screen and display. It works out well for me. Um, I can navigate it easily. It's very natural to navigate after working with uh, multiple machines. It's very similar to a lot of machines, especially the uh, G Screen. They do have a subset of G Screen where it's G Screen Industrial, and that that really is like the cream of the crop because you've got all your windows there. You can tap through um, all your offsets except for your wear, and it's just it's set up more like more like an industrial CNC controller that's better. Yeah, and it just runs better, I think. Um, now. Linux CNC does have one big advantage over Fanuc, and I know newer Fanuc controllers have this, the higher end ones have it. Uh, a graphical interface, as far as um, seeing what's going on, seeing your tool paths, uh, making sure, like, visibly that you're not going to crash. That's why I think Linux CNC is a really good thing that you can learn CNC programming on. It's easy enough to install and everything. It's what I would consider, I, I, I definitely do consider cheaper and better than Mach 3, even though some people are going to hate me, even Mach 4, uh, even though I haven't looked into it as much, not being re uh, running on a real-time operating system really hurts it, and having to outsource some of your um, things to a smooth stepper or anything like that is an issue because then you're paying for extra. Now there are... The more expensive boards are like a hundred bucks a piece, and you need one that goes in your PCI Express slot, and just like a parallel port card would go into your PCI Express slot, and an external one with all your I/O. So you can get pricey with Linux CNC, but there are some workarounds where you can be less expensive. Uh, one last thing, G code, G code sucks on Linux CNC. I've had issues where it will want IJK for radius moves, and then I've had instances where it's okay with an R, and it's not really clear why it wants an IJK when any CAM software that outputs in particular to Linux CNC is okay. Maybe I'm selecting the wrong plane. Maybe I'm like putting in G16 or something like that, and not not selecting the right right uh, axes for for the radial moves. Or something, something crazy like that. That could be very well on me, but I've had issues where putting it in longhand and programming longhand, it won't take my radius moves unless it's an IJK. And I don't like using IJK partially because I still don't kind of understand it. Um, I know that sounds wrong, but I am a firm believer in I will take what's easier and I'll, you know, I'll deal with that. But with the graphical interface and the graphical display you can easily see if you're I or J or K if you're picking the wrong one. And I know R, J, K, and X, Y, Z, you know, they're, they're in order with each other, and I should understand that better than I do, but if you don't use it, you don't understand it. You're... 
For lathes, it's missing one very, very important G code in my opinion, and that's G71. G71 is like the quintessential G code for machining because it does a cam cycle that does all your rough turning for you. You just outline the points in the you know the profile of the tool where you want it to be profiled to and it will do those multiple depths of cut by itself and you don't have to to worry about it it's Linux CNC doesn't have that and I know Akuma didn't have doesn't have that either they've got their own cam cycle that's weird and uses L or yeah I think it's L for uh, radius moves and it's kind of a it's, I think it's set up as a finishing one I never used it I don't ever want to because I feel like I'd crash a machine if I ever did. Sounds wrong saying, but yeah. So in summary, I got to give uh, handling offsets would definitely go to Fanuc. Accessibility, I mean, it's free software. Linux would definitely get that. If you have a school or something you can go to, definitely, definitely attend a school for machining. Uh, reliability, Fanuc, definitely Fanuc. Um, that's why a lot of these, they're very close to being, in what my opinion is, they're very close to, to being a, a strong player. And there are companies that are picking up. Uh, Pat Pilot for Tormach is a version of Linux CNC, but it's their own GUI. It's their own proprietary GUI. Um, so reliability definitely goes to Fanuc. Uh, repair, again... 30 bucks or like 200 bucks and you put this together yourself you're you're your own repair man unless it's like a servo driver goes down uh which is get a new servo driver or get it get it uh refurbished that's not a huge issue uh user interface i'd say that's kind of like a draw because you can tweak the user interface and make it more usable and make your own user interface you can, even if you wanted to, you could like copy, I wouldn't say doing this because I don't know if you'd get in legal trouble if you try to sell it. You could copy someone like, like Haas and copy their user interface and just make it the, you, for your shop. And that if that way, if you have multiple Haas mills or lathes in your shop, then you could just, or you're familiar with Haas lathes or mills you could just use essentially the same user interface for both of them. Linux is close. Like, if it had more developing, and if it were, I would almost want to say a paid-for program, I think it could be. Um, but since it's just, you know, volunteers building it and everything, and uh, a, a user base and a community built around it, um, it would take probably about another five to ten years, I guess, just to make it more reliable. But that doesn't mean you can make it more reliable on your own or find out what quirks it has and work with it and use it and have a CNC controller for like um, whatever your old computer and this guy costs or even a Goodwill computer. I mean, it's not a hard task. So, so yeah, I think this is, you know, pretty much my summary, my two cents in it. Um, if you have the money, I'd say definitely, and you were rebuilding machine, definitely go for a FANUC controller. But Linux is getting up there, and uh, yeah, it, given enough time and enough development, it can be a, a serious, serious thing. You can run macros on Linux CNC. Uh, they're a bit, it's a bit convoluted, but you can do it. Also, you can communicate through uh, Linux CNC to uh, to PLC and do digital out and you know set up a microcontroller or a PLC to communicate with it. So yeah, it's really it's getting there. It's not quite there, but it's getting there. So that's all I got for this video. So thank you for watching. If you sat through this whole thing, thank you. And I will see you in the next video.